Hi, I'm Michelle Martin. I'm host of a daily news and talk program on NPR. It's called Tell Me More with Michelle Martin. My day starts, I think like most journalists, my day starts actually before I ever hit the door. Um, it actually starts the minute I wake up. I start thinking about what are the most important stories of the day, whether we already have a plan for the story of the day, and what's the most important story of the day? Well, that's going to depend on who you are, what your audience is, who you think your audience is. Um, the first thing I do, well, I get up at the crack of dawn. I'm the first one up in my household. Nobody, I'm up with the chickens. Nobody else is awake. So I look at my Blackberry. I look at the headlines um, as quietly as possible. I start thinking about what we already have planned and whether that really is the right plan. On my way in to the office, I'm listening to, of course, I'm listening to NPR, but I'm also listening to other media, people who I, the people who I think other people might be listening to. And then the minute I get here, it's like being shot out of a cannon. I review the scripts for today's show. If, the, if there's a live segment that has not yet been recorded, I'm preparing for that. I'm also working for the kind of copy that circles around each segment. Every every segment is, every little piece of copy is essentially a commercial for what's coming up. Now, of course, we, we're non-commercial radio, so we don't really use the word commercial. But it is, in essence, a commercial for what's coming up. The whole point is just to try to keep you there, keep you on the dial as long as possible. So we keep telling you what's coming up and why it's worth it to you to listen. We try to focus on the stories, frankly, that the other programs are not focusing on, but which we still think are important. We have a particular focus on multicultural America. Uh, by that I mean the ways in which the different ethnicities, cultures, races are interacting in today's world. We focus on women in leadership. We focus on the international experience, particularly in parts of the world which, as I said, are important but which don't always get the attention that they might get from other news programs. We focus on Africa, the Caribbean, and Latin America. So we seek out I guess the easiest way to put it is we seek out the voices that we think are of value that you are not hearing everywhere else. Programs are produced in different ways depending on how the stations want to use them and how they're produced from here. Many of the talk programs, particularly those that are call-in programs, are produced in a linear way all at once, all at one time. So all the preparation is done in advance and once the host hits the studio, it all takes place there. But our program is produced in a different way. The stations use it at different times, in, in different times of the day, depending on when they choose. That gives us some freedom. We do have a live feed. We actually have two live feeds. But once that live feed is done, you have some opportunity to clean up, to edit, to fix things, some pronunciations. The reason we pre-produce certain elements is just to make it a good listening experience. Ready? Confronted with making those Open. choices that should have been made a long time ago. The mayor of Detroit, Dave Bing, is with us, and a Chicago student is brutally killed in Chicago again. Why? Broadcasting in particular is a team sport. I mean, if you really think about it, you really can't get on the air by yourself. Somebody needs to, you know, not just push the buttons, but 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 and even when you work in a very stripped down technologically uh you know, a narrow field where you maybe are operating with very little bit of equipment, very light and very uh, fleet of foot, you still need other people to get you on the air. And to me, that's helpful. I mean, having been a print reporter where I was alone a lot, one of the things I like about the broadcasting experience is that you generally pull in other voices. And I think that's useful. Editorially, I think that's useful. Intellectually, I think that's useful. There are people to share the experience with. Because at the end of the day, that is what you're doing. One of the things I think is important is that we have a very diverse staff, and you get the benefit of diverse perspectives. You know, how does a story, how a story strikes one person, it's not, it's not going to strike that other person in the same way. And I think that's important. I've worked in, you know, three different media. I've worked for four different news organizations, and. The good part about this is that there are not a lot of artificial barriers to entry. You know what I mean? You can be a journalist because you say you are. There are good parts to that. There are bad parts to that. To me, what's really important is that you focus on being a journalist. The medium in which you may practice your journalism may change. It may change two or three times or four times over the course of your career. It's a good thing to have, you know, is it a good life? I like it. I mean, to me, it's way too much work if you didn't like it. You know, if you have high energy and you like people, then, you know, there are worse things to do with your time. I mean, if, you, if this is something you're passionate about at a certain stage of your life, then you're great at it, and you can throw your body at it with energy and passion and commitment, 
and you only do it for five or 10 years, I'm okay with that. I just think what I care about is what you do while you're doing it. Ooh.